Psalm 103, Thanksgiving for God's goodness of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken words. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. And bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul.
A blessed afternoon, Aces! Amen! Thank you, Lord, ng pakita ng araw, no? Nawa, pray na ganyan kainit yung kagustuhan nating magpuri ngayon kay Lord. Amen? Our, our Lord is so great and He is worthy to be praised. Amen? Shall we all stand? Let's celebrate. Let's enjoy the presence of the Lord in this place. Amen?
thank you, Lord, because throughout our lives, you have been so, so good to us, Father God. And today, Lord, we sing your good, we sing of your goodness. Hallelujah.
were the beggars, but now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. Amen? So come on, church, let's continue to be in His presence.
Father God. Thank you that we receive salvation, Father God, because you so you are so great and great and great, Lord God. Thank you for this day, Lord God. We receive your blessing, Lord God, because you're so so our great, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we want to honor you and glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, well na po ba ang lahat? <laughs> Have you na fill up na din po ba yung cup ninyo? Okay. <laughs> so, ayan, pinifill up na ba? Alright. <laughs> so, today we are celebrating communion and also it's nice to see you again, <laughs> everyone. And ayan, I missed you for almost, yeah, two Sundays in Yeah, I praise and thank the Lord because I was able to come here healthy again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so today, uh, actually, before before we start, I uh, just want to testify something. So, yun po. Meron na po balat. Sige, ano mo na lahat? Okay, so I believe na bigyan na po lahat. So going back to as I was saying a while ago, um, actually before I came here to church kanina, uh, medyo may nangyari and nanakawan po ako. <laughs> But yeah, it's just, so, sabihin natin, it's uh, some, basta ganun, na amount of money. But Yeah, it's kind of ano nakaka disheartened pero mahal tayo ni Lord eh. <laughs> it's like I believe na siguro yung kumuha nun is may pangangailangan and syempre si Lord ibabalik niya yun sa akin ng doble. And uh, yeah, also at the same time, uh, okay. So going back sa communion. Uh, I think every Sunday we always hear yung mga nagsasab- nagsishare dito sa harapan. And they always say na mahal na mahal talaga tayo ni Lord. Ano, ganon. And I will remind everyone again that the Lord loves us so much. And that He is willing to send His Son to die for us. So, there, uh, actually, two Sundays po kong nawala. Again, lagi na lang po akong nawawala. And it's because uh, I believe I have already shared about my health condition po sa inyo. That I have a rare type of stroke and um, I have some episodic headaches. So I cannot control what's happening on my body. So para siyang ano na lang na umaatake na lang siya anytime. And anytime I I can collapse, na lang kakollapse na ako even my body. So for those two Sundays, I thought it's my time. Actually, yeah, because very weak, na talaga yung body for those weeks. In those weeks, but I remembered, si Lord nga, de ba? He na sacrifice niya yung anak niya just for me. 
what more pa kaya yung magagawa niya sa life ko. And I thank him and I praise and thank the Lord for that. Because again, I have experienced His unconditional love in my life. And today, yun, ito, this communion is reminding us that no matter what happens to us, let us remember that we have our Lord Jesus. We are healed, we are loved, and we are blessed because of Him. So sabi po dito sa verse, <laughs> in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, And they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. So, what we are doing right now is not just a celebration, but it is also our commitment to the Lord as He has committed His life for us. So today, let us eat of the bread and drink. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for reminding us again of all your sacrifices. Lord, we thank you that until now, Father, we experience your love and we will experience your love all the days of our lives, Father God. And Lord, we praise and thank you, Father God. We praise and thank you for everything that you have done to us, Father God. And Lord, we know you will continue to bless us, Father. Lord, we lift you up everything today, Father God. We lift you up the service for today, Father God. Lord, we know na may matututunan po ulit kaming bago ngayon, Father God. And Lord, may this reach our hearts, Father God. And Lord, we lift you up everything today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so... Um, Wait lang. Sorry po, medyo distorted. Pag nasa malayo po kasi ako, distorted po yung paningin ko. So, mostly po sa inyo, hindi ko po nakikita sa malayo. Kayo pasensya na po. <laughs> ah, okay. So, eto po pala. Uh, today po, eh, medyo special po ang ating giving. Kasi we have a um, speaker. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, speaker and... Um, I believe na madami din pong ginawa si Lord sa buhay niya and that He wants to testify the goodness of God to us. And may I call on, and let us also welcome Attorney Elijah Kasalan. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Alright, so, hi everyone. Uh, it feels good to be back, so... Kung kay Dana, two Sundays po siya na wala ako, I regret to say na it's been for more than a year already and honestly, it feels good to be back. Um, I don't have a valid reason similar with Dana's, but um, I just want to share that in the past year, um, in the past year, um, there were instances when the Lord has expressed His love towards me and how He fulfilled he, and how he fulfilled this promise. So, somehow I got lost of track. Nawala ko kung ano nga ba yung ginawa ng Panginoon sa buhay ko. But when I was talking to this person, um, she asked me, what's my religion? And I said, I'm a born-again Christian. And she sounded surprised because she's also a born-again a born again Christian. So, I was thinking, hindi na ba ako mukhang Christiano? Parang ganun. So... Because of that encounter, um, I had a reflection and I asked myself, when was the last time I had an intimate moment with the Lord? And this is the one that I'd like to share to each and every one of you. I am referring to my preparations when I was preparing for the bar exams. Um, when I was preparing for the bar exams, I took it last February 2021. It was a very tiring experience, mentally draining emotionally exhausting and physically draining as well. So originally, our bar exams was scheduled on November, I think that was November of 2021, but it was pushed on February 2022 because of the pandemic, because of the storm in Cebu. So imagine na lang kasi po yung sa bar exam ko, 
um, if you tested positive for COVID, you're automatically disqualified from taking the bar exams. So I had to isolate myself from my family. I had to stay in, a, in an apartment. Even if I'm here in Baguio, I can't go on fellowship with my family. I can't even go to church because of fear that I might um, get COVID. And eventually, it would result in my disqualification for the bar exams. So before, it was scheduled on January 5, 2022. So I had to isolate myself during Christmas. Imagine during Christmas, um, I was with my uh, colleague. We were just studying. They were celebrating Christmas parties, but we cannot join them because we're studying for the bar. Even in New Year, it's just the two of us who celebrated New Year. While we see the other families there, they are all having fun. So eventually, I got burned out. I was so tired. Then, nalaman namin, tapos pa siya ng February. So sana naki New Year man lang ako sa family ko. Or naki Christmas man lang ako sa family ko. Di kahit pa paano sana yung stress ko nawala. After that, um, I think it was a week before the actual bar exams. I was so tired. I was so exhausted. It's like um, I felt defeated already. And I was trying to force myself to sleep because I need to adjust my body clock. Para sa bar exams, when I wake up at 4 a.m., at least condition na yung utak ko. So what I did back then, no? what I did back then when um, I was trying to sleep, was that I prayed to the Lord. I sought Him. Okay? I sought the Lord. But my prayer back then was not for me to pass the bar exams. I just surrendered everything to Him. I said, Lord, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. And I get emotional whenever I remember this encounter. I'm sorry. In this encounter, I just surrendered everything to him. I said, I'm tired. I don't know if, if this is part of your plan, if this is part of your will. But Lord, Whatever, whatever the result will be, I'm willing to accept it. Because I know that whenever bad things happen to us, um, thank you. Whenever something bad happens to us that is not in accordance with our will, it is in accordance with His will. And He has great plans for us, believe me. So that was, was, that was my prayer when I was laying down. I was not asking the Lord to let me pass the bar exams because I worked hard for it. It took me so many hours to prepare for it. Imagine since June, I had been reading for six months on top of the four years that I spent in law school. But while I was in the middle of my prayer, God revealed to me, I don't know, God revealed to me that I will pass the bar exams. He also revealed to me that I will be a top-notcher too. Of course, I mean, <laughs> seryoso ba yung narinig ko? Kasi hindi pa ako nagtitake ng bar. Paano, paano malalaman na pumasa ako? Paano malalaman na top-notcher pa? pa pagpasa nga, ang hirap na top-notcher pa kaya. Yun yung nasa isip ko nun. But I got off my bed I was speaking in tongues, I remember that night, and I claimed it. Yes, Lord, I will pass the bar exam, and I will be an exemplary passer. I claimed it, I remember. So, so from, the, from, from that point in time, up to the time when I took the bar exams, I was at peace, because I know that God promised me something, that I will pass, and I will be a top-notcher. And you know, there are some sometimes when um, you think enemies will come and attack you because my colleague, he asked me, what are you feeling right now that the bar exams is nearing? I said, I, felt, I feel relaxed. I'm at peace. That's what I said. And he said, oh, 
Ano ka marirelax si eh? Malapit na yung bar, sabi niya ganoon. Hindi, I'm just at peace, sabi ko. I am relaxed. Then when I took the bar exams, modesty aside, I went through it with a breeze. It was so smooth. In fact, I left the um, bar examination room for each day, siguro an hour before the time expired. And I even went through my answers. Because when I was answering, um, somewhat yung wist, kung ano man yung mga inaral ko, naalala ko siya lahat. So, mabilis lang siya. Pero yun nga, magkakaroon talaga ng instances when um, the enemy will do whatever it is to try to question your faith, to question what you've heard. So, um, there was a time when Justice Leonen announced that he will release the results of the bar. And my friend back then said na, I have an idea so that you won't feel anxious. You, ano, ano yung idea mo? Sabi ko ganun. Inum tayo, sabi niya. <laughs> I'm being honest right now. So, we, we drank. I was so, I was so, <laughs> I was so intoxicated back then, but I'm still feeling very nervous. Akala ko ba yung alak dapat inanab niya kung ano man yung nafe-feel ko. Hindi eh. Natapos yung gabi. Very kabado pa rin ako. Then I went home. When I went home, uh, Bunjo's brothers were there, Belmar and PD. So I talked to them. I told them, Bel, PD, kinakaban talaga ako, sabi ko. Kasi ang daming pressure. I was already working at a law firm back then. And there were many expectations towards me. Sinabi ko kila PD at Belmar, kinakaban talaga ako. Then they said, no, papasa ka, papasa ka, sabi nila. Tapos, at that point in time, I was again reminded, yes, God did promise me something, that I will pass the bar exams and I will be a top-notcher. So that's what I told them. Oh, pre-namis na ni Lord, it was revealed, that I will pass the bar exams and I will be a top-notcher. I said, oh, pre-namis naman na pala, ba't ka umiyak-iyak <laughs> Then, the next morning after that, pagising ko, may hangover pa ako. Pero nung nagsasalita na si Justice Leonin, nawala yung tama ko. As in, nawala talaga. Ganun, so, if you're waiting for the results of your boards or bar, don't drink. That does not work. I'm telling you now. <laughs> so, anyway, um, when Justice Leonin was announcing the passing rates, he said, for first takers, 99%. Oh, I'm happy for SLU, 99%. But kinakabahan na naman ako. Kasi may isang hindi pumasa. Paano kung ako yun? But eventually, um, I saw my name, Kosalan, Elijah Roland Day, then I broke down in tears. Bar passer pa lang yun, pero ang saya-saya ko na. Then, another person messaged me who got an advanced copy of the exemplary passers, and he said, I also made it to the exemplary passers. And I owe it all to God, glory to God. And I remember that um, when I said na, nung nakita ko yung results, I'll testify I'll testify about it in church. Pero yun nga, um, the enemy will do whatever he, he wants to do just for you to, just to hold you from testifying about the Lord's goodness. But here I am right now, Lord, thank you for um, using people that led me here. And another thing, as I mentioned, it was only last week when I came, here, came back in church. I messaged Miguel, I remember kasi nahihiya pa ako, honestly. Kasi may isang taon akong hindi nagpakita. Tapos <laughs> bigla akong sisipot ganun. Then sabi ni Miguel, punta ka lang, sabi niya. I also approached Kuya Brent. Kuya Brent, how do you do giving ba ngayon? Paano ba mag-testify? Because I wanted to testify about this experience that I had. Then, yun, sabi nga ni Kuya Brent, oh, you just let me know if you're ready. And what triggered yung, ano, no, yung pagiging ready ko was that when Pastor Brent, was delivering the message. Nasabi niya yung Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 6. Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 6. When I was reading it, I started laughing in my seat. Because the verse has something to do with you seeking the Lord. And the Lord will reveal to you hidden and unknown answers. No one knew that I will pass the bar except Him. No one knew. But I sought Him and He revealed to me the answer. And with that, that ends my testimony. So, thank you, Lord. Praise be to God. Let's give.
Alright, um, let's read this all together, the offering declaration. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for heaven open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declaration, impartation, and divine manifestations, anointing, gifting, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation saved and set free, carrying kingdom revival. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessing, and increase upon me so I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven to see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That, of course, was Attorney Kosalan, number, number three sa balota, number one in your hearts. <laughs> ano ba? Counselor, Mayor, Barangay Tanod. Ako na lang Barangay Tanod. Hallelujah. Good job, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. For anything else, my friends, um, I just want to go ahead and uh, announce na we will be celebrating our anniversary as a, not just the, the ACES, but the entire church. Uh, Good News Community Church for the final weekend of September. That will be, uh, we will have a joint celebration uh, in the morning at 9 o'clock of se September 24. Uh, you guys are invited. But more importantly, uh, we will also have our own uh, commemoration of the anniversary on the 24th in the afternoon. 2 p.m. pa rin po tayo. Uh, ang banta nila sa, sa atin is they will come to invade us. Pero I go ahead and tell them, bring it on. <laughs> they th think they can intimidate us? <laughs> no. We love you guys. Sorry you're watching online. <laughs> No, 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 no. Please, we will welcome them and we will celebrate and we will minister to them. We will love them and we will show them some aces love. Amen. Now, but before that, my friends, I would also like to go ahead and, now, and announce that prior to fr yung the Friday and Saturday, before the 24th, this is on September, obviously, 22 to 23, we will have our leadership summit, our yearly leadership summit. As um, far as I know, this is going to be 8 to 5 on Friday and Saturday. Uh, we're going to be worshipping. We're going to li be listening to some speakers, uh, including our own dear Chairman Steve. We will be also listening to our dear Pastor Roy from Felix, our dear Pastor Noel from the Hope of Glory Church. Also be listening to Pastor Jody. Woohoo! And we will also be listening to our dear Pastor Marco from Tarlac. All right? Of course, we're going to hear from Pastor John as well, who will be speaking to us also uh, sa September 24. Po. All right? Um, so if you have any questions, if, if you'd like to register, um, just approach any of us. I believe we've sent the details over sa group chat natin, and I think we've also posted it also sa Facebook page natin. Um, I'd like to go ahead and testify that the original price per head was going to be 500, but because our Lord is Jehovah Jireh, we have brought that down to a discounted 300. Yay! Okay. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> anyway, yeah, praise the Lord indeed. Amen? God is good. I want to go ahead and, um, well, I've been, I've been talking... I've been trying to see if I should share. Carol, should I share what I shared yesterday? Should I? I probably should, huh? Especially the part na tumataba ako na. Yeah. Yes, I'm openly, I am openly acknowledging, yes, tumataba ako. You know, one thing that I want to go ahead and share to all of us, my friends, is that if you are consistent with your exercise and if you are consistent with your diet, then sure enough, 
you will find yourself losing more easily 20 pounds. I was easily able to lose, I was able to jump down from 165 pounds to around 140 or even, I mean, the lowest I've probably been was 135 Yan yung mga times na tinitignan, tinitignan nyo ako, tapos parang pumapayat ka, sobrang payat, blah, sobrang payat mo na, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. I think nakinig ako sa, sa inyo. Alright? Kasi here's the thing, the opposite holds true also. When you become, when you start being consistent in eating your sugar, when you start becoming consistent in eating your junk food and snacking anytime that you want, boom! The weight comes back, my friends. I want to go ahead and honor and praise God for, her, for His work to our Ate Brenda because we know for a fact that she has lost weight. But I want to honor and praise God as well because I am also a living testimony of how you can lose weight and gain it back again. <laughs> That's one of the things that was going on in my mind last, last August. How was your August, by the way? Your August? How was your August? Lots of activities. We had a lot of activities here, yes? But that, that's one thing that was going through my mind the entire month last, last month. I was gaining weight and there was no stopping this punch. Now, here's the thing. That wasn't the only problem that I had. There was one time that I was working on my trusty handy-dandy computer and all of a sudden, the monitor just dies on me and I start smelling smoke. And I start smelling uh, burning, I don't know if that's a mix of burning metal and plastic. And then I just went ahead and assumed that my graphics card just gave up on me. Turns out, long story short, nasira po ang power supply ko. All right? Another thing that was going on was that as I was going down Bukaukan, and I have my mom to be my witness for me, we were going down Bukaukan, and, you know, one of the worst things that you want to smell while you are driving a car, a two-ton hunk of metal, one of the worst things that you want to start smelling is gas, my friends. Because you never know, all of a sudden, you are, ride, you are no longer riding in a car, you are riding in a bomb. Alright? So what happened there, my friends? I guess what happened, I think we're still diagnosing the issue. We've gone as far as diagnosing our, and seeing that our radiator had problems. You see, picture this. A car, ironically, a car runs on two opposing elements, oil and water. Alright? But unfortunately, you can't have oil where water is, and you can't have water where oil is, obviously. But here's, what's, here's what happened. The radiator, got, the radiator got so hot that the water... ...got even hotter than that to the point that the oil in my machine also started burning. Now here's the thing, I want to go ahead and give God the glory because it could have overheated and I could have stopped at any point in my, maybe in my trips to Tarlac and back or maybe here, you know, in the middle of the road. But thank, sabi nga ni Pacquiao, thanks God. <laughs> thanks God po that the thing, I mean, hindi nag overheat yung kotse and I still have it right here. It's not a coffin, it's still a car. <laughs> Things have been going on, my friends, and the thing, the end, you know, what I wanted to go ahead and share to our uh, brothers and sisters in Compassion yesterday was really about just how if we see that if, uh, if we see that our plans are not going according to what we want, and if so many bad things are happening all at the same time, perhaps the world, would, world will tempt you to go ahead and stop trusting in the Lord. But you go ahead and sit still, be still, and know who the Lord is during these times because you never know. Surely enough, the Holy Spirit will go ahead and minister to your hearts and your minds and remind you that even in these times, kahit sa mga sunod-sunod na mga masasamang pangyayari, you will, that's where you go ahead and see that our God is faithful. That's where you go ahead and see that in spite of your plans being busted and destroyed, you go ahead and see that that's where you go ahead and see that the Lord has a plan for you and He has a plan that is beyond any plan that you have. A plan, by the way, is a, that, that, a plan that is there to prosper you and not to harm you. A plan that is there to give you hope. Amen? See, I was talking to our compassion people and I was telling them that anyone else that doesn't have Christ, they don't have that hope. 
They're only limited to just saying, woe is me. Nobody knows the trouble that I've seen. And wallow in their sin. Wallow in their, wallow in their, um, in their hopelessness. But we want to thank God because of the hope that, he give, that we have in Him. Especially during these times of total darkness. Amen? He is the light in our darkness. Are you with me so far? And that was just yesterday. I haven't even talked about, you know what? We haven't even talked about what we were supposed to be talking about today. We're talking about the aspects of seeking. All right? And one verse that you will definitely be hearing along this, this, uh, this anniversary month, it's not there in your notes, but I want to go ahead and share Psalm, one, Psalm 34, verses 1 to 4. And if you don't see it in your notes, I'll just go ahead and read it out. Because it says here, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Ho, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You see what's happening here, my friends? We are, we're, we're blessing the Lord at all times, as it says. His, his praise shall be coming out of my mouth at the start and at the end of the day. All right? And not only will I be praising, but I will encourage everyone around me. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Because we sought the Lord and he answered me. And he delivered me from all my fears. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For Elijah sought the Lord and he was given the word that he would pass the bar exemplary. That's in the Bible. Hello? Gosh, you, you guys are a tough crowd today. Huh? We're saying that when we praise the Lord, we lead others to praise him also. Because we ourselves, we sought the Lord and He answered us and He delivered us from all our fears. All right? And what we did last week was we talked about seeking. And when what we agreed upon was when we talk about seeking, it's good enough already that we live our lives when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It's awesome enough that we revel in the fact and in the truth that no matter what we're doing, no matter where we are, no matter who we are with, the Lord who has promised that, he's, that He would never leave us nor forsake us, He is always with us. So whether we are aware of His presence or not, my friends, we can surely enjoy His presence, yes? But here's the thing. If we go ahead and say that we seek the Lord, when we seek the Lord, we are intentionally seeking Him. We are, we are making intentions to enjoy this presence that He has with us. We are intentionally appreciating the fact that He is with us regardless of what's happening in our lives. In fact, whatever is happening in our lives, if we seek the Lord, when we intentionally seek Him, we're saying that in spite of all of the problems that we are, we are encountering, in spite of the victories, in spite of all the failures, we are seeking Him in the sense that we are intentionally appreciating His presence during those moments. Amen? So let this be a reminder to all of us, okay? When we go ahead and say that we seek the Lord, it's not necessarily seen in your praying, not necessarily seen in your reading the Word. It's not necessarily seen in our fellowship. It's not necessarily seen as you go ahead and listen to my voice making you sleep. Okay? Not, it's not, your seeking the Lord is not necessarily seen in the actions that you show, but rather in the heart that you have and in the intention that you have. With that being said, you can go ahead and seek the Lord while you're driving. You can go ahead and seek the Lord while you're brushing your teeth. You can go ahead and seek the Lord whether you are out there in the streets or here in church. In fact, dare I say, we're seeking the Lord right now. Right? Now with that being said, when we do seek the Lord and when we express intention to appreciate Him, what did we talk about last week? We talked about how we expose our ways to His ways, all right? It says it there in Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. If we go back to those verses, they're not in your notes, by the way. That was last week, okay? But when we talk about, when we talk about seeking the Lord, one thing that will happen is that we present our ways and we, we, we present our ways and He presents His ways as well. 
He will reveal His ways to us and He will guide us along His paths. Okay? So what happens? What happens? What happens when we seek the Lord? What happens when we seek the Lord is that, number one, we get clarification. What sort of clarification? Well, we see the Lord's ways. We compare it to our ways and we see what's wrong and we adjust. Okay? Number two, what, what else do we get? We, not only do we get... Um, not only do we get clarification, but we also get guidance because He shows us our paths, all right? And then again, praise the Lord for Jeremiah chapter 3, 33, because not only are we being clarified, not only are we, we being guided, but we want to give the Lord the glory because this God who knows everything, who has created everything from beginning to the end and is beyond time and space itself, who knows all there is that is to know, he is bold and He is loving in telling each and every one of us that we call on Him and He will reveal to us things that he will, we have never seen before. Beyond our sight, beyond our mind, out of sight and out of mind. So when we seek the Lord, we learn. And how do we learn? Well, we clarify. Not only do we clarify, we are guided. And not only are we guided, we're also given secrets. We're also being given revelations. All right? Some of us here may go ahead and ask like, oh, how did you know that? Well, the Lord told me. Not to go ahead and say that, oh, the Lord told me, but He won't tell you. <laughs> no, that's not how it goes. In fact, you should go ahead and encourage your brothers and sisters that, hey, guess what? If the Lord is able to reveal this to me, what more can He reveal to you? Guys, no, we're not here to go ahead and play the game of I have more clout to God than you. We're not playing the game na mas malakas ako kay Lord kaysa sayo. Alright? So let's not forget that if the Lord tells me something, that doesn't necessarily mean that I have superiority over you. Because I know for... But here's the thing. When the Lord reveals something to me, let that be a reminder to the rest of us here that the Lord will reveal things to you as well. Let's not keep our eyes on the revelation, but the source of the revelation. Because the thing about it is, some of us get to that, you know? We stop right there and the Lord told the, the Lord told me, you know. <laughs> the Lord told me to tell you this. How many times? I'm sorry, I mean like I'm going off I'm all, I'm going off 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 track here. But how many how many times have I heard that? Like, oh the Lord told me to tell you. I love this. I mean, in our, in our beautiful Pentecostal church, you know. I mean, I'm saying, okay, fine. Thank you. The Lord told me to tell you this. And I'm, I'm thankful to the Lord for your love towards me. All right? But here's my question. If the Lord told you to tell me, why didn't he just tell me instead? <laughs> Maybe because I was not listening. See that right there? You know? We can't always be philosopher in this church. <laughs> All right? But that's the thing. That's what we love, guys. Here's the thing. It's not always about revelation, but we also get the corrections as well. Again, it's not just revelations. It's clarification. It's guidance. We learn when we seek the Lord. Yes? And that's one thing. And here's the thing. And today, why <laughs> kayo? With everything that's going on in my life, my gosh, I, I, I want to go ahead and say, you know, how great thou art indeed. Now it says here that we, I mean, it says here that one of the aspects of seeking is, if we talked about seeking, if we said that if we intentionally seek the Lord or if we intentionally appreciate who He is and what He has done for us, we will start learning, all right? And also, here's the thing. We also mentioned that if we, if we have trouble comparing our ways and getting clarification, guidance, and revelation from the Lord, I thought we could stop there. But the thing is, Jesus Christ Himself, before we even had the heart to seek the Lord, He was the one who came down to us first. And not only did He reveal Himself to us as the truth and the life, but He also revealed Himself to us as the way. All right? So you have to understand this. Whether you do not see it or not, you have to understand that the way is with you right now. All right? Look at someone right now na mukhang wala siyang direction sa buhay. 
you go ahead and tell that person. Actually, yes, you can go ahead and look at me if you want to. All right? Go ahead and remind that person that Jesus is the way and Jesus is with you. Amen? For purposes of this message, I want to go ahead and... Um, I was led to Psalm 84, all right? And we're just, we'll, I, think, I think we'll just have to go through this, all right? It says here that, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, o Lord of hosts. My soul, my soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. My brothers and sisters, two things that we want to go ahead and learn here is that, number one is that if we go ahead and intentionally appreciate or we take some time to go ahead and meditate on God's promises, when we take some time to meditate on who God is and what He has done for us, do not be surprised if you find that that place that you find yourself in is lovely. All right? You go ahead and force yourself with, with whatever, whatever, whatever you've taken from TV or whatever thoughts you've had of ex and experiences in the past. Sure, you can go ahead and experience some pleasure from those memories. But praise God because He continues as we continue to go ahead and say. He will continue to reveal things to us that we have not yet known. But here's what I'm trying to say is that when we go ahead and appreciate His presence, He goes ahead and shows us aspects of His presence that we would never see on our own. All right? Which would lead us to go ahead and say, How lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord. In fact, it doesn't stop there because yes, we go ahead and appreciate. Wow, ang galing, andito pala ako. I'm here in this presence. I'm here in His presence. Praise the Lord for His presence. All right. But it also says there, my soul longs and faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing joy to the living God. We're also reminded that who are we? Who our being? Because we have been made such new creations in Christ. We are reminded that that's the only place that we can be. That's the place to be is in His presence. Because when we're not in His presence, look, our soul, not just our bodies, but our soul, our entire being just faints. We have no power apart from the Lord. Are you guys with me so far? But here's the good news. This was written in the Old Testament. But praise God, the good news is that the Lord Jesus Christ died and rose again so that we can enjoy His presence wherever we go. Just like what we mentioned, we have His presence wherever we go. So that being said, even if we go ahead and are, we, even if we're reminded of how our soul could faint, it will never happen. We will never be away from our God. You want to know why? Because Christ made it so. Not because of your goodness, not because of your performance. You can go ahead and try to run away from Him if you can. If you can, but you can't. We go ahead and say stuff like, Oh, magtatampo si Lord. No, wait. No, I don't think so. Are you guys with me so far? Even a sparrow finds a home and a swallow a nest for herself where she may lay at her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. And, it's, and it says there, Selah. I don't know if that's the right way, way for us to pronounce that, but Selah, or whatever you want to go ahead and say. But when we go ahead and find ourselves at the word Selah, that means that we stop and meditate. All right? And we indeed meditate on where it says, Even a sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. When I was reading this, I was just led to go ahead and think that everyone has a place in the presence of the Lord. Even the swallows, even the birds of the air, who we don't care about, even they have a place in the courts of our God. But more importantly, this is what I want us to go ahead and um, concentrate on. It says here, blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. My brothers and sisters, are you in the presence of the Lord? You are. Let me go ahead and remind you that Christ paid a great price for you to enjoy His presence right here, right now. We, it's, it's all we've been talking about ever since we started. You are in the presence of the Lord. Therefore, when it says, blessed are those who dwell in your house, 
you are automatically not only in His presence, but you are blessed. Amen? In fact, maybe that's your blessing. How are you blessed? Because I dwell in the house of the Lord. How are you blessed, my friends? Because you are in His presence all the time. Amen? But here's the thing. It doesn't stop there. Wait, there's more. It says here, blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. My brothers and sisters, if you find yourself, take some time. Take some time to take that in. The Lord Jesus Christ, once we were far off, hopeless and in sin, and doomed to die, oblivion, and zero nothing. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he restored us. He reconciled us to our Father, and now we are never separated from Him, and nothing in this earth, nothing, no life, no death can ever separate us from the love of God. Amen? Amen. We appreciate that. And maybe that's why we go ahead and say that we are blessed. Why were we blessed? Because we enjoy His presence. And why do we enjoy, and how can we say that we enjoy His presence? Because we are blessed. Those two come together. You're enjoying your presence in the Lord also makes you enjoy His blessings. All right? But here's one thing I want to go ahead and say. In your blessing the Lord, or in your enjoying His blessings, and in your enjoying His presence, it's automatic, my brothers and sisters, whether you have a wonderful singing voice, like Pastor Ray, Ray Nielsen, or if whether you have... Why are you laughing? Like I said, we'll be welcoming them, all right? Come on. Malay nyo. Mag-opera yan this coming ano, anniversary. But here's the thing. Whether you sing or not, here's the thing. You will be brought to worship, my friends. You will be brought to worship. Everyone who is in the presence of the Lord, regardless of your talents or lack thereof, if you think you have talents or if you think you don't have any talents, guess what? If you know that you are in His presence, you will know that you are blessed and you will automatically praise the Lord in your way and in your style. What am I trying to say here? Because of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are always in His presence, you are always blessed, and you are always ever, it says here, ever singing His praise. All right? We praise the Lord because we are in His presence. Let me say that again. We praise the Lord because we are in His presence. It kind of sounds contradictory to one of the things we've, been, we've used to be talking about in this church or any other church for that matter. You remember those times that we were in Prime Hotel where we were concentrating on how good the worship had to be that bababa ang presensya ng Panginoon. And, and the thing about it was, technically, long story short, we were praising the Lord for His presence. Right? But now... You see, in spite of the projector failing kanina, that we were praising the Lord because, not because we wanted His presence to come down, but we were already enjoying the fact that we are always in His presence. There's been a change in our way of thinking, my friends. Because see, even, the, even our other brothers and sisters who don't know any better, they go ahead and say stuff like, before we go ahead and pray, diba? Imanga, okay, uh, Diba nag-church ka? Ikaw na, pag-pray mo naman yung pagkain. Bakit ako? Diba yung mga ganun? Now the thing is, and then what's the, one of these, one of the lines that you hear when those prayers are being said, before those prayers are even mentioned are, uh, let's put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> right? It's no longer like that, my friends. You go ahead and say it, or you say it, you say it, or you don't say it. Whenever you go to those parties, you, those marriages, those funerals, you bring the presence of the Lord with you. And this causes not only you to praise the Lord, but the people around you to praise Him as well. There's been a change in the way that we are thinking, my friends. There's been a change in the way that we worship. It's not for us to worship for His presence to come down, but we worship because we are in His presence here and now. I'm just stressing that point to all of us because I'm seeing some of you right now trying to kill me. I don't know. I mean, that's... And here's the thing, my friends. That's how far, I, that's how far as I went, actually, in 
looking through this psalm. But let's go ahead and go through the rest of it. It says here, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. <laughs> I think we'll end with this. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are, are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, <laughs> they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Worship team, help me out here. What kind of, what kind of songs that we have where we go ahead and say, um, God is my strength? We sang that, right? God is the strength of my heart, right? But apparently, I mean, that's a, it's, a, it's a different thing entirely for us to go ahead and sing that other Steve Kuban song. My strength is in you, Lord, right? Oftentimes, we go ahead and say that, God, I am strong because God is my strength. But little do we also realize that the other way is also, I mean, the other way is also, also true. His strength, our strength is in Him. His strength is in us. Our strength is in Him. It only further stresses the point that we are always with Him. When we say that we are always with Him, what does that mean? Our strength is in Him and His strength is in us. All right? And let's... Actually, okay, that was wonderful already, but let's go ahead and end with this, the second line, the second half of that line. Blessed are those whose strength in, is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Now, some of, the, some of the translations here, they say here that, in whose heart are your ways. Might I go ahead and reiterate for each and every one of us here that we know the ways of the Lord. We can say that we know the ways of the Lord in every detail and in every, and in every undertaking. Why? Not because we know each and every detail specifically, but because we have the way, the truth, and the life alive in us. All right? Doesn't necessarily mean that we know every detail of the way, but we have the way with us. We say that our strength is in the Lord and uh, His strength is in us, but we also say that we are in Christ and Christ is in us. And because Christ is the way, so we have his way in us. And he is the way that is alive in us. Therefore, it says here, we are blessed. Why? Because our heart, it says here that his heart is in the way. Therefore, it's saying that our hearts are in Christ who is the way. And this way is in our hearts. Are you with me so far? Please, try to hang on here. Because what I'm trying to say here is that as we go along and as we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ... What does it say? In John chapter 7, it says there that those who believe in me, out of his heart and out of his belly and out of his being would stream rivers of li li living. Rivers of living water. All right? What does it say in the next line here? It says there, as they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. Let me go ahead and tell you guys this. When we go ahead and talk about, there's no literal place called the Valley of Baca. But this is symbolic for any valley. When we talk about the valley, it probably, should, it probably automatically comes to the mind of some of you guys that this is darkness. This is hopelessness. This is, this is any problem that where we see no way out. So what is this saying? As they go and as you go through your own troubles... You make it a place of springs. You bring the way. Your heart is in the way. And out of your belly shall stream rivers of living water. And this is especially true even when you find yourself in darkness. Even when you find yourself in hopelessness. Rise up and have hope, my brothers and sisters. Because even in these times of hopelessness, you will continue to stream rivers of living water. And the early rain also covers it with pools. Not only are you guys praising the Lord by yourselves, my friends. Blessed are, blessed are you who are in His presence. But the other people around you as well na dadamay. Alright? So whether you're, whether you're driving your... Whether you're preparing pasta, Jomar. Whether you're running a gas station, Nati Joy. Whether you're running an apartment complex, Mama Nitz, 
whether you're about to open your salon, mom, whether we are about to start our business, Lance, whether you go ahead and sign paper after paper, my good attorney friend, no matter what you cook, Manong Yuri and Mama Josie, and whatever dealings that you and I have, my friends, number one, you are in his presence. Number two, you are blessed. And number three, you are constantly blessing him. Number four, out of your, out of your bellies shall bring rivers of living water. So you may not be the one in darkness, but maybe your friend is. Guess what? Let him be blessed. Amen? Have you been blessed today? Yes. Heavenly Father, praise and glory to your beautiful and wonderful name. So much more to say, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. So much more to share, but we'll leave it at that. Father, we want to praise you. And we want to thank you for your ever-enduring presence in our lives that causes us to, to praise you and glorify your name. So Father, as we continue this month, as we start this new week, Father, remind us of your presence. Remind us of the blessing that we have in you. Remind us of your love. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and praise the Lord. So, let us all stand as we continue to declare that we bring heaven with us. Amen.
Spirit, you are great, you are good, you are wonderful, you are mighty, you are awesome, you are in all things great and grand, perfect in all your ways, magnificent and marvelous. Oh, God Almighty, glory and honor to you, Heavenly Father. First and the last, beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, worthy of all our praise, worthy of all our adoration, worthy of all our attention and focus. He is Lord and Lord Almighty, upon heaven here on earth, who has separated our sins as the east is from the west, whose mercies are as high as the heavens. He is our God, our Savior, and our Lord, and our King. Praise and glory to his name forever and ever. Thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, that even as great as you are, O Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you because nothing could ever separate us from this great and grand presence of yours. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your goodness and your love. My brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his perfect peace. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Guys, can I add?